Okay, let's do this. So in this video, we're gonna cover tile sets and every possible configuration that you can apply on them. So let's get started. Okay, so by opening your database once again and go inside the tile set tabs, this will bring you onto that specific page, which is the space where you're gonna be able to configure your tile sets. Now, you can not only configure the exact graphics that you're gonna use inside that tile set, you will also have the possibility to create new tile sets for new maps and also apply a tons of configuration which will allow you to do a lot of cool stuff. Okay, so one of the most important things to take into consideration when creating new tile sets or editing one are the blocks on the tile set page A. It's more specifically the A1, A2, A3, A4 which represents animation, ground, buildings and walls. Now to give you a quick example, if I was to decide that I wanted to modify the animation A1 of the outside tile set here built by default by RPG Maker MZ, which represents those little blocks at the top of the tile set that you can see, if you click on it, you will see that you are able to notice there's a lot more than what it looks like on the tile set. And the reason for that is that specifically water, which is mostly used for animations, requires multiple images in order to give that effect that the water is actually moving. Now, it's not really moving, as you may have noticed, it's simply images being played next to another one that gives you that effect that actually water is animated. Now, if you were to try to pick the ground tile set, let's say outside A2, and put it inside the animation, then you will encounter a lot of big issues and like weird behavior because the editor is still gonna try to animate your ground and so that will simply look weird and most likely not gonna give you the effect that you're trying to achieve here. Always keep in mind that the tile set you drop inside the A1 animation tiles is always gonna be animated by the editor no matter what and so if you don't have a correct image that respect the format RPG Maker MZ is expecting to receive, you're gonna encounter a lot of troubles. And the same logic applies for grounds, buildings, and walls. Now, another important part to make sure to consider whenever you create a new tile set are the buttons at the top right corner that you're able to see over here. I'm gonna go through each one of them and I'm gonna explain to you what they do. Now, in order to demonstrate this today, we're going to use the MVMZ inside tile set, which I'm not done configuring yet. I've only used it for the graphics. Now, the passage will create a lot of circles for each one of the squares you see inside your tile set. If you click on one of those circles, either with the right mouse button or the left mouse button, it, you see that the symbol is changing. Now, the circle represents that the character, the players, are able to walk correctly without interference on that specific tile. The hex will represent that they cannot. And if we go inside the column B, you will see that there's a star appearing, appearing over here. And if I try to change it over there, you'll see that there's also the new option of a star. Now the star also means that the character can walk on that tile. The only difference with the circle is that whenever you walk on it, the image of that tile will appear above the character. So it's really great for trees and like large chairs, maybe even shelves and whatnot that you want to show above the characters and not beneath them. Now the second button is the passage for direction. Now this is mostly for tiles that are that you're allowed to walk on. So let me give you a quick example here. Let's say that you were not allowed to walk on those stairs over there but you are allowed on those ones. Now, if I go inside the passage for direction, you will see that these just became dots and the one you're still allows as four arrows. Now, this basically allows you to have perfect control on which directions the character can go from there and also from which direction the character can move on this specific tile. That means that for the laters, for instance, if it doesn't make sense to me that the character can, could go from left to right, while we're currently climbing the ladder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prevent those options. Thus, the character is only gonna be able to go from up to down or down to up whenever climbing this specific ladder. Speaking of ladder, this is our third option. What it does is that if you click on it, you're allowed to 
set the option ladder on any graphics that you see inside your tile set. Now, the way it works is that whichever tile you set as a ladder will have your player face up automatically inside the game no matter what while they're standing inside the tile set. So once again, for ladder, once the character is walking on them, if you were trying to go from up to down, normally you would have your character is facing down, but it doesn't really make sense because right now they're kind of like on a ladder. So in order to fix this, if you set the tile ladder correctly, you will see that even if you're descending from that ladder, the characters are still facing up no matter what. A little bit like this. Now the bush options is going to give you a visual feedback whenever you walk on a tile that is set as a bush in order to give you the kind of effect that you're walking on tall herds or something. So it works really well with actual bush. So if I'm just going to change it, this tile set from there and we're going to set like those three, four bushes differently as a bush if I Disney them. Let me show you the results that you receive in game. So here's what the visual feedback looks like when you walk inside a bush or on a tile that is designated as a, as a bush. As you can see, the color change based on what the color of the bush itself looks like. Now counter is going to apply two effects on your tiles and should mostly be considered to apply on tables. The first thing it's going to do is that it's going to make the table itself a little bit larger, but also it's going to hallow you to interact with the t NPC standing on the other side of any tile that is considered a counter. So to give you a quick example, here's what it looks like without a counter. So as you can see, I cannot talk with the NPC on the other side of the table, and the cake looks like it's gonna drop off the table any minutes now. Now, if I try with an actual counter, as you can see, the cake problem has been now resolved, and if I try to talk with the NPC standing on the other side of the counter, hello, yay, it works. So that's what counter is for. Now the damage floor is allows you to designate a floor on which the character can walk on, and whenever it's gonna walk on it, it's gonna take damage. So let's just show, take the specific bricks over here. I'm gonna show you a quick example. The brick over there has been set as a damage floor, so once I'm gonna walk on it, I'm gonna start losing damage. As you can see, my health is currently 544, and if I walk on it, I'm also getting a visual feedback to indicate the players that A, it damages you. And while I keep walking on these, well, as you can see, my health has dropped quite a bit. So that's what floor damage is for. And finally, we have Terran Tag. So what is Terran Tag exactly? It allows you to allocate a number between 0 to 7 on a specific tile. Now you may be wondering what's the point be behind all of this. Now if you go under the events, so let me just close the database real quick. If we go under events, you will be able to see on the third tab that you got something which is called jet location info. And so from that location info, you can actually store a Terran tag inside a variable and the Terran tag you're looking for can be a specific location on the map or it can also be designated by variables. So what can you do with all of this? To be honest, there's a ton of stuff you can do with this and just too many to be covered in a single video. And so because of that, we're not gonna go through exactly everything that can be possibly be done with the dead location and formation of a specific tile but we're gonna save it for future videos when we're gonna start really introduce great gameplay elements that you can implement inside your RPG games. All right, so that's it for today's video on tile sets inside the database and now you can configure those to behave on specific manners. Make sure to like, subscribe and leave some comments, whatever, and I'll see you later for another video. Bye, goodbye.